You hear it all the time, don't you, that the batteries in battery electric vehicles fail on a regular basis and need to be replaced. The myth is usually that they need to be replaced every three years. The good news is that that's not true. At least, it's mostly not true. Let's come back to that later. But why does that myth persist? Well, it's all about these, isn't it? So many people have got smartphones, and so many people have had smartphones where the lithium-ion battery in them has stopped accepting charge, that the phone has lasted less and less time as time has gone on. And that's a real thing that we've experienced, and so we can relate that to battery electric vehicles. The problem is the use cases are very different. You see, with a mobile phone, we want this to be portable. We want it to be as small as it can be and as light as it can be. We want it to charge as fast as it possibly can and yet be as cheap as possible. And the combination of those things is not great for lithium ion batteries. Not only that, but it turns out we don't use them in quite the right way. And we'll talk about that later. But mobile phones are very different from cars. We don't need cars to be portable. Um, they're not as cheap. I don't know if you've noticed, but you have to pay a bit more for a car than you do for a phone. You see, the lithium ion battery in an electric car is something which is expected to last a long time, to last the life of the vehicle. And so it's been manufactured in a way that makes sure that's the case. You see, your mobile phone doesn't have cooling system in it to keep the battery cool as it charges, whereas pretty much every electric car, except maybe the Nissan Leaf, has active cooling, active thermal management of the battery to look after it, to make sure it's warm enough when it needs to charge without being too hot as it does so. Not only that, but when you charge an electric car to 100%, you don't actually charge it all the way to full. Certainly, the dashboard will tell you it's at 100%, but there's a buffer at the top which doesn't get used, and that's to protect the life of the battery. It's to extend it as far as possible. And furthermore, there's another buffer at the bottom, which is for the same thing. So when you're out of juice, hopefully you're not absolutely out of juice, because that's not very good for them. And that's why comparing an electric car to a mobile phone is not as simple as it may seem. And what's more, there's also a whole bunch of battery chemistry stuff which is different between the two. As we get to understand lithium-ion batteries better, we can build them in such a way that we protect against their lifetime being degraded significantly. And they can get better and better, and we certainly seem to be seeing that at the moment. As it is, battery electric vehicles are on the market. Go and look on your favourite car auction or purchase site. There are plenty of them that still have pretty reasonable range. Now certainly they will have degradation, and in particular the Nissan LEAF has more degradation than anything else, and that's because it doesn't protect its battery by thermally regulating the battery. The battery is passively cooled, in other words it sits there and if the ambient air is cooler than it, then it will slowly give energy out to the air. But that's about all that's going on. Here we are under the bonnet, or the hood as some of you might call it, of my Renault Zoe. And look what we've got here. This is a 12 volt lead acid battery that runs the auxiliaries of the car. It runs the things like the lights and the computers, and it's used to turn on a relay which controls whether the high voltage battery is on or off. This has a limited life. And this is probably where those myths come from, because it's true to say that between three and five years, these will be changed. Indeed, on a Renault Zoe, there is a recommendation that you change them every three years as part of the servicing routine, so that you never get to a point where it fails. These days, we shouldn't really be using lead acid for this job. It's probably not the best thing that we could be using. For an internal combustion engine, it has to work very hard in order to turn that engine over when it's cold. But in an EV, the requirements are different, and probably this should now be a lithium battery. Indeed, Tesla have changed over to a lithium battery in their cars, and they should see an improvement in the reliability of those cars for that very reason. So in summary, the life of EV batteries is fine. We don't know when they're going to run out because they're not really doing it very much. There have been a few failures, 
And Nissan Leafs have seen quite a lot of degradation, but they're a special case because nothing else is quite like the Nissan Leaf, both because of the chemistry it used in its very early days, which was not a particularly good one, but also because it doesn't have thermal management. EV traction batteries don't fail. The 12 volt battery that runs the electrics may fail just as it fails in your internal combustion engine car. And that's where the myth comes from. You see that lead acid battery under the hood. That could give out and need replacing, maybe every three years, maybe a little less frequently. But that's where the myth comes from. The traction battery is fine. That rubbishy ac accessory battery that's under the hood, that's the thing that gives out most often. But the good news is, it's very cheap to replace. And indeed, I bet you've done that in your internal combustion engine cars more than once. But don't just take my word for it. If you want to know more about the chemistry of the traction battery in a BEV, then I suggest you check out the work by Dr Ewan McTurk. Some of his work is available on the Plug Life television channel. He's an electrochemist and he can talk in great detail about how the various chemistries are used and how that impacts the life of the battery. My channel is intended not just to be me talking, but it includes playlists to other people's work. So remember to check that out. Thanks for watching today's video. Your comments and feedback are most welcome. Pop down in the comments and give me any thoughts you may have about today's video. Like the video if you have done, because there's a chance that more people will see the video and it will feel like the work I'm putting into them is more appreciated. And certainly subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks very much.